Hey guys, this video is about the Smart Bypass kit, um, a new kit that I have on the store. I just want to talk a little bit about it, um, what's involved assembling it and what it does and how you can test it when you're finished. Um, just a few things to help you um, actually assemble it. Before I do that, uh, this is a project that Eric has designed, um, as I explained in the last video, um, working with an engineer to come up with some new projects and this is one of them. Uh, so it is a very clever bypass solution. It is a very reliable bypass solution. We're going to talk about some of the some of the positives for the project. Um, so let's get rid of my cup of tea. So the first thing is that it uses an awesome switch. I've actually incorporated it on this pedal, which is my um, uh, this is actually a pedal that I'm doing on my own. Um, the turbo uh, turbo driver, which is a um, uh, color sound overdriver um, and it is uh, used on that um, so down the bottom you can see the the PCB the, the bypass PCB so just make sure as you can see it is large it has a lot of components going on it um, for maximum reliability and uh, just make sure you leave enough room for that this is the sort of project that I would use in a if, if, if a if a band member came to me and asked and commissioned me to make him a pedal. This is the sort of bypass solution I'd use because it's so reliable or a special, something special that I was building for myself. Um, like maybe not something quite simple like an overdrive. Look, you can use it for whatever you want. I'm just sort of tossing around some ideas. Um, but it is, it, I'm saying this because it's really reliable. It's not exactly cheap because this switch, like just as an example, right? If you look at some of the components that are involved, You've got the relay, and if you know anything about relays, they're not cheap. You've got this switch, which I can tell you, in bulk is $6. It's an, it's an awesome switch, um, but it is expensive. The PCB and a whole bunch of other components. Um, so it's not the cheapest project going around, but it is rock solid. I would have no problem putting something like that on a pedal that I was building for a band member or something like that. Something I wanted, I, I wanted to be reliable. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to put together as well. We'll go into some of the um, wiring in a moment, um, but let me just first say that that switch on there is just, it's awesome. It's got such a nice touch. I got my wife to press one of the pedals that I'd built with some, I won't say where I've sourced them from, an economical source. Um, and I said, look, can you tell the difference between that and that? And she's just gone, that's so crunchy. This is not one of those dodgy switches that are really crunchy. Um, this is still something that everybody uses every day and it's really crunchy. What does that mean? Does that, does that matter? Does it matter that it's crunchy? Um, to me it does and I had, I've actually mentioned this in the past. Someone actually said to me, you know, like, uh, why does it matter that, that the switch is crunchy or not? It just goes to show the engineering that's going on inside. If, this, if the rocker is just, is just um, scraping every time you're 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 pushing the switch. How long is that going to last compared to something that is so fluid um, to switch like this? It's also a single pole double throw. That's the solder lugs. You can see the three there. Um, so it, that, the mechanism inside is much simpler than the three pole double throw. We have to rip one of those open one day. I'll show you what's actually inside it. The plunger and the actual rocker that's inside a. Um, uh, a three pole double throw. It's large and it needs to make contact with three poles. So, you know, it's pretty, um, uh, it's, you know, this is part of, we're going into part of the reason why I, I, we're even doing a, a, a bypass, um, a relay bypass solution. It's because people don't want to use those because of the reliability. Um, so anyway, let's take a, a look at, what will we look at? Maybe we'll look at the schematic and I'll show you how you can test this if you're building one for yourself. Now this is actually going to be a little tricky for me to um, show you because my print is dead and I can't actually print off the schematic. Um, so I'm just going to have to. If you go to my, if you go to the web store and go to the Smart Bypass, you'll see the build doc. Um, and just on the last page of the build doc, there is the schematic. So you might be able to sort of follow along with this. Um, so with this, it's actually quite simple to test because um, the relay is just basically like a switch. 
Um, so, so this, so this foot switch on the front is just sending a signal to the digital chip. To tell the digital chip to send a signal to the relay to flick between um, on and off. Um, and and the relay basically just works like um, a um, two pole two pole double throw. I'll show you on the I'll show you on the schematic. I'll just move the camera. So I'm just going to explain quickly how this. Uh, how this circuit works um, so that you can test it. This is the whole point of this is so that you can test it once you've built it because you should always test um, before, particularly if you're building onto a PCB just to make sure that the thing works before you, um, before you move on to connecting it all up. Although with that said, I actually did connect mine up straight to the PCB and I had an error and I could actually, I could actually test it even when it was all connected. Um, I worked out what the problem was. So in, yeah, <laughs> In, I'm going to talk about this basically because that's about the level of my understanding of it. That's the digital chip. That's the relay. You can see the relay's got a couple of um, rocker switches on the inside, and they when the when the digital chip gets a signal from the stomp switch, which is down here, um, it will change this configuration. So those it, it'll make the relay. Um, uh, go, you know, like rock from um, one uh, from one connection to another. I'll explain that in a moment. So, so in its current configuration, you might be able to see there. It's very small, um, but I need to keep it zoomed out so I can show you what's going up here as well. So, two pins two and three of the relay are connected because the rocker, as you can see, the rocker switch is is making a connection between those two in this state. Um, so, if you follow two up you will find that's connected to effect input. And if you follow three up, you'll, fo you'll find that's connected to input. So what that's saying is, in this configuration, your input signal comes down to pin three, and because that's connected, it goes straight through and comes out to effect input. Your guitar signal input goes to the effect input. Makes sense, doesn't it? So this is the engage state, obviously. This is when the effect is working because you, your input is going through the effect. So what are we going to find on the other side? Well, it's probably going to be, you probably already worked out. Um, so pin 9 goes to effect output, and pin 8 goes to output. So the effect output, um, so your distorted signal or whatever, comes out, goes into pin 9, and then comes out um, to the output of the circuit and goes on to um, your amplifier. So that's in the engage state. So what happens when a, you hit this switch, and the digital, the signal from the digital um, at tiny goes to um, the relay, and the relay changes state. So now you'll have three and four connected. So three was the input, four is this this connection, which is called bypass. So it's just going to go straight from four over to seven, and it's going to go out on pin eight, which is the output. So it doesn't go through the effect in that in that respect. It just goes straight to the output. So that's the bypass. Um, the bypass state. So that's how you can test it. Make sure that all these are connected in the right configuration. Use a digital multimeter, connect them to the um, to the pins, and then hit the stop switch and make sure that it's switching between the input and output. Uh, sorry, the engaged and disengaged states. And if that doesn't work, of course, you've got something wrong on your on your effect PCB, and you've got to go through and work out what is wrong with it. Um, so. I hope that gives you just a quick idea of how to actually test the bypass. It's important to test it. It's a great solution. It, um, Eric has put a lot of thought into the reverse polarity protection. He's using something a little bit different on this one. And also the anti-pop solution. He's also using something a little bit different as well. Um, so it's it's a really rock solid solution for a bypass solution. And, um, and I could just press that button all day long. It feels great. So that's what you get in the kit. Um, all those, the, all those bits. The the at tiny is pre-programmed. You don't have to do it yourself. That would be a waste of time because you've got to get the program. It costs twenty dollars, and no one's obviously going to want to do that. So I've pre-programmed the chip myself. <clears throat> the switch is in there. The PCB. Pretty much all the components are in there. There is one component which is used for the LED. Um, it's not the same as what you normally do. Don't mess around with the current limiting resistor on that one um, because it's coming out of the digital chip. And if you make that too low, the digital chip's going to pull too much current. Um, so I asked Eric about that. I said, what if they want to change the brightness of the LED? And he said, stick between 1K and 1.5K. 
So just make sure you stick between those and you will be fine. I think that's all I really wanted to talk about with that one. You're going to see it in action when I do the um, sound demo for the turbo the turbo driver, whenever the hell that's going to happen. Sorry, I'm <laughs> very busy at the moment. Um, but yeah, when I've done that, I'll, um, you'll, see it, you'll see it in action. Um, and that's it for this one. Hope you like the little explanation and get ready for more um, uh, different projects coming up. Uh, as I said in the last video, me and Eric are working on some other stuff. It's going to be great. Um, and if you need a professional bypass solution, you know where to go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the, the web store and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.